This video will cover a basic introduction to functions. Before we get to the term function, we need to look at some other basic definitions. A relation is just a set of ordered pairs. The domain is a set of all first numbers in the ordered pairs, and the range is a set of all second numbers in the ordered pairs. So take a set of numbers. That right there is a relation because it's a set of ordered pairs. I can have one number in my relation. I can have a bazillion number in my relations. It's just a bunch of points. To name the domain, the domain is all the first numbers. So 2, 3, 0, 5 makes up my first set because that's the domain. And the range will be your second numbers, 4, 7, 1, 3. There's nothing fancy about the order you put these in. A function is a relation in which each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range. Take something like this. This is a function because each member of the domain has exactly one partner. Three goes with five and nothing else. One goes with four and nothing else. Eight goes with zero and nothing else. That constitutes a function. However, this is not a function because we've got 3 paired up with 5, and then we've got 3 paired up with 4. You're not allowed to have that. This is not a function because 3 is paired up with two different y values. Simply put, the x values cannot repeat, unless you have something goofy like this. If I have the point 1, 4, and then I have the point 1, 4, that still makes a function, but it's just redundant. There's no reason to write that point twice. So when I say the x's can't repeat, I mean they can't repeat with different y values as partners. Now this is a function, 3, 5, 2, 4, 8, 4. You might think because those 4's repeat that this is not a function, but it is okay for the y values to repeat, which might seem like it's unfair. X's can't repeat, y values can repeat. Here's the explanation for that. I think about the old-fashioned input-output machines that you saw in grade school. Input means you're going to put something into the machine, there's going to be some rule applied to the number, and then it's going to be output as some other number. So I just made up this rule, y equals x plus 5. If we put in a 1, and it goes through this rule, 1 plus 5 is 6. If I put 1 in there again, I'm still going to get 6. If I put 1 in there tomorrow, I'm still going to get 6. So 1 pairs up with 6. There's no way I can put 1 in there right now and get like an 8. So that's not possible. That's why your x's cannot repeat. However, if I had this rule, y equals x squared, if I put 1 in there and I square it, 1 squared is 1. If I put negative 1 in there and square it, negative 1 squared is a positive 1. That's perfectly legal for the y values to repeat. Now, can you tell if an equation represents a function? I don't mean order pairs, I mean something written as an equation. To be able to determine that, you have to solve the equation for y. If more than one value of y can be obtained for a given x, then the equation is not a function. Sounds complicated, but it's not. Let's take an example. x squared plus y equals 4. Let's solve that for y, which means we need to subtract x squared from both sides, which gives me this. Now, when we think about values for x and y, it's kind of like making a t-chart. So let's just put some numbers in. Let's put 0 in for x. If you put 0 in for x and do the arithmetic, 0 squared is 0, plus 4 is 4. If we wait an hour and put 0 in again, we're still going to get 4. If you put 1 in here and do the arithmetic, 1 squared is 1, but a negative of that means negative 1 plus 4 is 3. I'm still going to get this pair, 1 comma 3, if I put 1 in there today, tomorrow, and next Tuesday. This is a function. Over here, 2x plus y equals 4. To get this y alone, subtract 2x from both sides and think about values for x. Put 0 in for x. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. If you put 0 in another time, you are still going to get a y value of 4. The way this is set up, there is just no way I can get repeating x's. If I put a 1 in here, I'm going to get a particular y value. If I put 1 in here again, I'm going to get that same y value. So this is a function. 
all non-vertical lines are functions. This is linear. So if you recognize something is linear, automatically they are functions unless they are vertical lines. Now take a look at this. x squared plus y squared equals 4. Solve that for y. I'm going to have to subtract x squared from both sides to begin with. I have y squared. I don't want y squared. To undo that y squared, I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides, which gives me this. Remember, when you solve an equation by taking the square root, you get a plus or minus in front. And here's where we're going to have a little bit of trouble. If I put 0 in here for x, let's say, put 0 in here, 0 squared is 0, plus 4 is 4, I'm looking at plus or minus the square root of 4. Well, that means 0 could give me 2, or 0 could give me negative 2 because of that plus or minus. So that's a big tip-off. If you have a plus or minus in the equation after you have solved for y, it is automatically not a function. Now take that back a step. Take a look at why we got plus or minus. Plus or minus because we had y to the second power. That is an even power. So if y is raised to an even power, the equation is not a function. So if you had something like x plus y to the fourth equals 6, you don't have to go through the solving for y. Automatically, this is no. But if you have x to an even power, no big deal. x squared plus y equals 8, that's okay. That's yes. So those are worth learning so that you don't have to do the arithmetic. Now, sometimes you have to use something called the vertical line test to tell if a graph is a function, meaning something is already graphed and we want to know if it's a function. Maybe it's graphed and you don't even have an equation for it. So the vertical line test says this. If I draw any vertical line, any vertical line, as long as that vertical line crosses my graph once or less, I mean, I could be way out here. If it crosses once or less, it is a function. Go over here, do your vertical lines. Cross here once, 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 once. That means this is a function. So what the vertical line test says, if any vertical line crosses the graph in two or more points, the graph is not a function. How about we draw, how about we draw this vertical line? It crossed my graph twice. It crossed there and there. That means this is not a function. Same idea here. Draw a vertical line here. It crosses once, twice. It is not a function. This last part of the video will go over what is known as function notation. Take a look at this. This stands for f of x equals 4x minus 5. This is function notation, this little f with the parentheses and the x. And that is translated, as I said, f of x. And what it stands for is it's the value of the function at the number x. So take f of x equals 4x minus 5, and I want to know what f of 2 is. That means I'm looking for the value of the function at the number 2. All I have to do is plug 2 in for x and do the arithmetic. 4 times 2 is 8, minus 5 is 3. So the function value at 2 is 3. That could be thought of as the ordered pair 2 comma 3. You could think of the 2 being the input on my function machine and the 3 being the output. Another one, put negative 3 in here. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 minus 5 is negative 17. Keep in mind something important. f of x and y are the same thing. So when you see f of x equals 4x minus 5, if you're not real happy with the f of x, you could think about it being y. Let's take a look at another one. Plug negative 3 in here. Negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 5 times negative 3 is a positive 15. Add those up. Gives me 24. So there was an input of negative 3 an output of 24. Negative 3 is a member of the domain. 24 is a member of the range. Now this looks kind of strange, but it's still asking us to do a substitution. f of whatever means to plug that whatever in for x. So I need to plug this binomial in for x. And because I'm plugging in a binomial, I need to put that binomial in parentheses. So this is x plus 2 squared minus 5 times parentheses x plus 2. This is squaring a binomial. To square a binomial, I need to write that binomial out twice, x plus 2 times x plus 2, and then FOIL it. 
there's my foiling, and then I distributed the negative 5 through the parentheses, and then I combined my like terms, and that is the expression I get. When you plug in a variable expression, you're going to get some sort of variable expression as your result.